bag, put in a, it's, it's just gone viral now in, in the internet world, in the Twitter world, in Facebook world, about, they, they took a two minutes clip from his preaching on the man on the, the thief on the cross. He said, one day when I get to heaven, I would like to ask the thief who made it to, the he to heaven, he said, how did you make it? How was it like? Jesus on the center cross, the thief on the left, the thief on the right. The thief on the right said, Jesus, you call yourself the son of God. Save yourself and save me too. And the thief on the left side, quiet. We are the criminals. We deserve the cross. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said the most single most important line of his life. He turned and looked to Jesus. Literally like minutes before he died, or hours before he died, he spoke to Jesus, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. And guess what? The answer from the, the Son of God is the most stunning answer I've ever heard. He turned around and looked at him. Today, he still, when Jesus said that he was about to die, you know, he was bleeding so bad. I think he was gasping for breath. He shouldn't be saying, today, you will be with me in paradise. And that's it. <laughs> Alistair Beck said, this thief who got to heaven, when he got to heaven, the angels kept how did you, asking, how did you make it? How did you make it? Uh, I don't know. I'm here. And then let me give you, let, the angel said, let, let us get our supervisor here. So they, they want to get the supervisor <laughs> to, to meet with that guy. Um, the supervisor said, mm, let me just cut to the chase. Do you know the doctrine of justification? And that thief said, what? <laughs> okay, forget that. Let's go straight into the doctrine of the inerrancy of the scripture of the word of God. Have you heard? I've never heard anything. So the supervisor of the angels say to him, um, but how did you get here again? How did you get here? And the guy blurted out. He said, the man on the middle cross said, I can come. That's it. He said, I'm coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what you need. The man said, I can come. Jesus said, I can come. That guy has never been to Sunday school, never been to church. Never been to baptism, never been to Sunday school, never heard doctrine of justification, nothing. He's up there immediately. I love that. That's called unmerited grace of God. Hallelujah. You, you know, it's bad. Alistair Beck asked this. You know, when somebody goes to heaven and the people in heaven ask, how did you get here? If you start with the, with the personal pronoun I, then you're done. Because you have done nothing. Whatever you've done, you shouldn't even be here. You should be down there. Don't even come and tell me you feed two, 250 poor, uh, homeless people. Don't come and tell me that you, you give a lot of money to the poor. Don't come and help me that you help the widows and everything. They're all good. But those this thing won't get you here. If you ever start with the personal pronoun, I, you're out, you're done. The only way you are here is because he, hallelujah, because he has saved me. He said, I can come. He said, I'm coming. That is unmerited grace. That is, a, that is what Jesus has done for us. He has done everything for me. That's Christianity. It's not performance. Remember this word. I got it from Tim Keller, this one. It's not performance. Remember this. Christianity is never a performance. It's, not, it's never how good you have tried to be. I was on a one hour call again with my mom Friday night. Every Friday I called my mom. I told her so many times about believe and that's it, right? I said, but what about those people who are who be really good people? You know, they don't believe in Christ, but they, they've done a lot of good things. The Buddhists, and, you know, they're Muslim. They're all, they are very good people. I said, mom. By being good, you never get in there. It's about what Christ has done. I, I, she knows it, but she, she's 80, 82. So her mind sometimes just forgets, forgets, forgets. I keep trying to bring her back. Every week I have to remind her. 
It's never about you. The performance is, I go try harder. You know what? This is really, really important. Christianity is about unmerited grace. Calvin brings grace back into worship. You know, when you worship God, you don't have the transcendent awe, A-W-E, awe of God. Worship leaders speaks of the cuff. That's his words. You never prepare well. And you, you Tim Keller calls it, it's like a foxiness, foxiness. You know, it's like, it's very light, you know. It's very easy. There's no a sense of all towards God. But if you have all the sense of all only, and the teaching of the word of God only, you don't have the joy. You see, worship, you have the both. You've got to have transcendence, connection with God, and the delight in God. That can, both of them can only come from the unmerited grace of God. Hallelujah. Because he has done it, I am so awed by him. Because he has done it for me and saved me, I'm so overjoyed. You can have both. But if you come to the house of God and say, I will worship you, I will praise you, Lord, to get something from God, it's gone. You just, you just lost the transcendent presence of God. In your life, in the worship, it's the same thing. Worship is worship, congregation worship, and worship all of life. When you go and play baseball, play well, enjoy God, you, you are worshiping God. When you study, do everything for God, for Christ. You see that? Performance will not get you in. But the, but the grace, unmerited favor, I'm, I, I should... I don't mean favor. A merited grace of God will get you in. And you're so much more happier person. You come to, how many of you have done this? You try, you come to a point that you're so tired of trying that you cannot do it anymore. You want out and you just say, I, I'm just so discouraged. I cannot do it. I prayed and prayed and nothing happens. It happened to me. I'm sure it happened to you. But when you come to a point, you say, you come to a point, you worship him more. Because he has done it. I cannot do it. What am I going to do? I'm going to ride on what he has done. Hallelujah. You can only ride on. The, the premise of what you can do in life is based on what he has already done for you on the cross. Everything. Everything. Worship and your hardship in life. Whatever you want. Ministry. Relationship. Relationship. 